What's up guys, your boy Boss Mac back to gaming.com and it's been three months since Nvidia gave us the RTX 40 Super series of graphics cards which included the GeForce RTX 4070 Super, the RTX 4070 Ti Super, and the GeForce RTX 4080 Super. We already have performance reviews of all these cards up in our website if you want to have a general idea of the performance steering of these cards. But if you're already on the fence for an RTX 4070 Super, then this video is for you. Today we'll be looking at the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual Graphics Card, easily one of the most affordable RTX 4070 Super card out right now in the Philippines. I've seen your feedback about this card, so we'll talk about thermals and more in this video right after some benchmark. But first, an intro to Palette. If you're Filipino, chances are you are well aware of who Palette is as a brand. But for those that mostly pay attention to Western tech channels, Unfortunately, I have to say that most Western folks have a skewed view of Palette as a brand, which is quite unfair. Palette was founded in Taiwan in 1988. As an NVIDIA authorized AIC partner, they have been in the business for over 35 years and have experience in making graphics cards for users in over 60 countries across the globe. And about the name, Pinoy tech enthusiasts have long joked about Palette's name, but the name itself is based off the word Palette, which in the art world is a tool to create color much like their graphics cards. Old heads like me still remember Palette's debut of their Jetstream series many many years back and now they have expanded to have the Game Rock, Gaming Pro, Dual and the Storm X series to join their portfolio of designs. And that brings us back to our review subject for this video, the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual Graphics Card. Serving as Palette's foundational series, their dual series of graphics card is positioned for mass adoption and the majority of cards under the dual series are exactly two slot height, making them easily usable on many cases, is small or large. The Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual Graphics Card packs 7,168 CUDA cores up from 5,888 from the original RTX 4070 Non Super. Base clock gets a slight bump to 1980 MHz from 1920 MHz, and the maximum boost clock is similar from the Non Super card at 2475 MHz. Memory configuration also remains the same, but Nvidia has put in a larger 48MB L2 cache on the Super to help in improving performance. The Palette Dual Style Cooler features a, well, dual fan cooling options featuring a pair of 95mm fans. We'll have a deeper dive into the cooling and thermal performance of the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual later in this video after we talk about performance. Wrapping up our overview of the card, the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual requires a 12B HPWR connector and the card comes bundled with a 2x8 pin to 12B HPWR and the package. As mentioned, the card has a flush 2 slot height. It's slightly wider than the RTX 4060 Dual that we've looked at before, but both cards support Palette's Maker Initiative where users can customize their Palette Dual graphics card with custom 3D printed Snap-on shrouds. Palette includes a plastic backplate on the RTX 4070 Super Dual and when powered on, there is an LED light slip that support RGB. Lights can be customized and changed by the Palette Thunder Master software along with manual and automatic overclocking, fan tuning, and curve customization. With all that out of the way, let's talk about performance. A written version of this review will share more details on individual game performance. Do check that out at backtogaming.com after this video to learn more about the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual. We start off with the overall performance where our GPU has a GU mean score of 194 FPS across 15 games at 1080p. At 1440p, the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual scores a GU mean of 158 FPS at 1440p and 91 FPS at 4K. For context, the RTX 4080 Super has a GU mean score of 211 FPS at 1440p and 131 FPS in 4K in our testing. Compared to the RTX 4070 Ti Super, the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual performs 17% below at 1080p and 25% less at 1440p versus the 4070 Ti Super. All of our tests are done on max settings though, so if you want to push more frame rates instead of getting the higher cards, lowering settings is still an option. In our ray tracing tests, which include games like Cyberpunk 2077, Plague Tale Requiem, F1 2023, Returnal, Spider-Man Remastered, and more, the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual shows an average hit of minus 49% with ray tracing enabled. Thankfully, the card averages around 74 FPS at QHD, and with DLSS and frame generation available, it's easy to get more frame rate on games that support DLSS upscaling and frame generation. But you probably know all of that 
what you're here for is if you should get this card over other cards. I'm still rebuilding my performance database, but from my last test around the start of the year, the RTX 4070 is still being sold for the same price as an RTX 4070 Super in most places. If you're wondering which to get, the RTX 4070 Super has at least 10% overall performance improvement over the RTX 4070 in most cases. Against the 7800 XT though, it's going to be situational, and giving a recommendation without much context would not give you the whole picture. Do check out the written article for more details. When I posted this GPU to tease the review of the Palette RTX 4070 Super Duo, some of you mentioned the card being hot, but is it really? It's impossible to simulate the life of a card in just one full day of stress testing, but long enough tests are good enough to show us the peak temperature of the card. The RTX 40 series is famous for running cool, but relatively smaller coolers have shown a rise in hot spot temperatures. And this is the reading that a lot of people are really concerned about. So what's exactly the hot spot? Sadly, only Nvidia knows. What we do know is that across the entire surface of the GPU die, there is more than just one single sensor, and the hotspot is effectively the hottest sensor across the die. Here we have three benchmarks featuring three fan settings. A stock fan setting, a custom fan curb, and the fans to the maximum. We can see the GPU clock speed is quite even on all three settings. GPU clock speed is directly related to GPU temperature. And we can see the stock fan settings were peaking at 74 degrees Celsius on average, whereas with the custom fan curb, the GPU is cooler by around 10 degrees Celsius. Paying close attention to the maximum fan speed and custom fan curb, as we can see here, the difference isn't that large, but this fan curb can get really, really audible. I found sending the fan curb to peak at 2700 RPM at 70 degrees Celsius is an optimal way to keep the noise to a minimum. Now onto the hotspot, our immediate finding here is that better cooling really helps so if you feel your hotspot temperature is higher, then the temperature reduction from faster fan speed can definitely help. So is it safe? You may have seen me use graphics cards as loads for PSU tests, and these tests span days on end, putting GPU on high loads, and I've yet to have a card fail on me or at least report a hotspot higher than 100 degrees Celsius. For the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual, our recorded temperatures seem to be on the safe side. Again, when checking temperatures, please take note of the sensor you're reading. If you're experiencing random shutdowns and you notice that your GPU temperature and hotspot and VRM temperature and even the memory are abnormally high, then this may be sufficient ground to have your card looked at, so don't be afraid to contact the shop or Palette social media channels for further support. And did you know that Palette has a 3-year warranty? As long as you got your Palette graphics card from an authorized distributor, Palette has you covered from manufacturing defects, including abnormally abnormally hot graphics cards. It's still, if our review sample is an indication, with fan speed only humming at 47%, Palette's cooler is definitely doing its job, and very quiet at that. If you feel that that's a lot of headroom, you can manually set a fan curb as well as an overclock for your Palette graphics card by the Thundermaster software. The Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual is easily the most accessible RTX 4070 Super on the market right now, with pricing sometimes beating older stock RTX 4070, making that dilemma a non-issue if you're on a budget. Against its AMD counterpart, it gets more complicated, with the RTX 4070 Super edging out the Radeon by around 10% in most cases. The Radeon offers a cheaper option, but you also lose a lot of what NVIDIA offers for content creators, streamers, like NVIDIA Broadcast, better upscaling, and frame generation. The Palette RTX 4070 Super is a good recommendation for any users that want an Essentials First graphics card but don't want to overspend on grandiose cooling or RGB. The Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual is a good recommendation for any user that want an Essentials First graphics card but don't want to overspend on grandiose cooling or RGB. The Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual is available now. Contact your favorite dealers or check their listings online for pricing and availability including PC Hub, Data Blitz, and DynaQuest. Be sure to visit the link at the description if you want a more in-depth look at the Palette RTX 4070 Super Dual Graphics Card in our review article. This has been your boy Boss Mac, back to gaming.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to like the video, comment the video, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.
Yep. Ya lo.